all to worship. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and my supplications. Because He is kind to me. Sometimes in our sin, we use our own 
Thanks be to God. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Say it. At that time you will be given what to say. 
for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This ends the reading of our Gospel lesson for this morning. Thanks be to God.
but he knows how to use the tools. He, he was brought up as a carpenter or brought, brought up as a, as a stone mason. And sometimes, I mean, that, that can um, wrench a little bit people. I, I didn't intend for that pun there, but um, when we think about Jesus being the carpenter, we've heard that for many years. But what if we start thinking of him as a stonemason and actually chiseling away um, stone rocks and building a house with stones? Jesus said, and on this rock, he was speaking to Peter, Simon Peter, and on this rock of faith, I will build my church. And um, in the times of where Jesus was located and situated, there weren't a lot of trees around. So building buildings wasn't common with wood. Wood was a more scarce material, and stone was more common. Um, so it's possible, I'm not saying that he only worked with stone, or he only worked with wood, but he worked with all materials. He knew how to build buildings, he knew how they were constructed, and he knew how to use the tools that his father, his earthly father and his spiritual father, to build buildings, and he knew how to build people too. And, and what Jesus here in this passage is, so he, he came across multitudes of people, he came across the crowds, it says, and, and he, he had compassion over them because of the hurt and the pain that they were, they were in. And um, the compassion that he felt for them of the loss, for the, for the things that they were going through, to, for, for the, uh, the afflicted ones, for the, the, the lost sheep, essentially. He had compassion for them, and he, he knew that there was a great harvest that was ripe and ready to, to receive the gospel. But he had to know what tools would unlock each individual heart, because every, everybody's heart is differently, everybody's walked different roads, everybody's lived different lives, even if they were in the same town, they all experienced something different. And he had to know what tools to use with different people. With um, uh, he had to continually go to the, the his father and ask him, okay, what tool do I use here? What's going to unlock this person's heart? What's going to heal this person from from this pain in their heart? And a lot of times we we associate physical pain or physical ailments. Um, and actually can be traced back and rooted to a heart condition. And I'm not talking about a physical heart condition, but I'm talking about a spiritual heart condition. Whatever is going on inside of the heart is going to emanate and come out through, um, through our bodies physically. If we are blind in our eyes or deaf in our ears or have a skin condition, there is oftentimes a root issue or a root cause that has permanent, that has triggered in our heart, such as maybe there's a screw in our heart, maybe a nail in our heart, or maybe there's a broken heart. And, and Jesus goes into his tool bucket and he, he says, well, am I going to, am I going to take a, a nail out of this? Well, this isn't going to take a nail out. Or, or what, what can I use to, to, to take a nail out? Can I use pliers? Possibly. But, but the ultimate tool for taking a nail out might be a hammer. But is it going to unlock that person's heart? You can drive that nail in harder. You can beat the heart harder. But are you going to take out that, that pain area with the right tool? And Jesus went to his father and continually asked him, okay, what tool do I use here? I was at Lowe's on Friday evening getting some things. I'm constantly doing housework, it seems like, fixing up a house. And I went to Lowe's, got out of the car, and I noticed a lady sitting in the car right next to me in the passenger seat. I said, that's weird. She's just sitting in the car. Nobody else in the car. Going to Lowe's, find a few things. I'm not sure what I'm actually looking for or what I'm buying. I know it approximately. And I go to the checkout, self-checkout lanes only open, I, of course, I don't like self-checkout, like, really don't like self-checkout. 
but there's this little three-year-old kid at the open lane where I'm prompted to go there by the cashier. And I'm like, oh, why is this little kid at, at my checkout lane? I don't really necessarily, I love him. Like, I, my eyes are drawn to him. I just, he is emanating brightness and joy and life in this little kid. I'm just, oh wow, I'm just enamored with this little kid. And his dad was at the other checkout lane, but I didn't necessarily pay attention to him. And his dad calls him over as I approach that lane and uh, I buy my stuff and stuff. And I'm walking out. Father and son had walked out previously uh, before me. And I noticed father and son walking right next to each other, hand in hand. And we're kind of walking and converging to the same point. But I noticed his dad didn't have any arm from his shoulder down. I'm like, oh my goodness, how did this happen? Is there something that I, I can I pray for him? Can, can Jesus bring that arm back to life? Can he grow him, grow a new arm in him? And these things start running through my mind. I'm like, ah, oh, how do I love that person? How do I um, preach or give the gospel away to this person? And I unlock my car and the lights flash and he then looks over at me as if the lights flashing signified something that I would, he was going to the same location or whatever. Well, it turns out that this guy was going to the same car that that lady was sitting in that I noticed when I got out of my car. And I got out of my car and I'm thinking, okay, God, you're obviously speaking to me. Am I supposed to do something? And then I got him and I drove away. But why is it so sort of scary for me to preach the gospel or share the gospel with somebody? And, and where is my unbelief in myself of wanting to love this person to grow an arm back? Or how can I share the gospel in a way that, that he's going to get it? That he's going to receive the love that Jesus has for him individually? And I, I notice these things throughout the entire encounter while I'm at Lowe's. I'm like, wow. Of all places that sell tools. It's like, hmm. So I get frustrated with myself there. But are we willing to actually go out as Jesus sent the disciples and preach the gospel in a way that people will understand it? Not in a way that that is just going to be used with words. Like, oh, Jesus has come to save the lost, to save you from all sins so that you don't go to hell. Is that going to actually penetrate the heart and actually speak to them directly? Or are we willing to walk up to him, to somebody and say, what's going on? I really feel prompted to, to ask you what's going on. And then listen for their response. So I wanted to kind of go through some of the tools that, that Jesus uses. Or maybe not the tools, but the, the triage tools that, that he uses to, um, to assess each of our hearts. And one of them is light. Jesus will use light to look inside and actually look to see what the condition of each of our hearts are in. And he will shine the light in the dark places. He will shine the light in the not so dark places, but he'll look to see where the heart is so that he can know what parts are broken, what parts are um, filled with maybe anger, or what parts are filled with um, festering sores or wounds. And he first has to look to see with his own eyes. But are we willing to ask him, search me, look inside of me? So one of the, 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 the key things is God sees us just as we are. He looks inside of us with his light shining towards us. Another way that, that God assesses our heart is by listening and hearing us. So 
So whether or not we're saying something or we're not saying something, Jesus will listen to the heart by putting a stethoscope to our heart and he'll, um, not in a literal sense, but he'll listen to the heartbeat. Does it have a regular heartbeat? Does it have a um, consistency to it? Or is it not beating at all? Are we actually alive to um, have a joy in us to actually get up out of bed and actually do something that day? And then the last one is a blood pressure meter to actually see how hard the, the heart is working. If we have a high blood pressure, that means our heart is working harder just to maintain our own life. We're not willing to, we're not able to actually just sit and be with a low blood pressure. And all these things are in a spiritual sense, but they come out as a physical manifestation. We can have high blood pressure in a physical realm because there's something going on in our spiritual heart that's actually causing us to be anxious about something. We can send our blood pressure through the roof just about worrying, will my car start today? Or how am I going to pay my bills? Or anything that we're struggling with. But is our heart working harder than it has to? If it's working harder than it has to, is it going to be able to do the work that God's sending us into the fields to do the labor that he's calling us to. If a heart's not in a good position or, a, or a, in a healthy position, are we able to um, go to the fields and actually reap the harvest that Jesus says is at hand? He's asking for laborers, but is our heart ready to go out and actually do the labor that he's calling us to? So these Bible signs are used to assess each of our hearts and used to assess, like Jesus can even, we can ask the Holy Spirit and we can go into Lowe's or we can go into the grocery store, go into the post office and we can say, Holy Spirit, what, what do you want me to assess with this person? Or how do you want me to share the gospel with this person? And we can ask them, well, their heart just doesn't feel hurt. They don't feel hurt in this situation. So listen. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they want to just get out of them. Sometimes that's all that somebody needs is just to talk to somebody. Somebody needs a friend. Be a friend to them, even if you don't know them. Jesus is the friend to all of us. So Jesus is the craftsman. He'll use anything to heal you. He will use anything to heal anybody else um, in the world. And he's so creative in that sense. He has an unlimited supply of tools. So just as I grew up with my father, he has an unlimited supply of tools. And I'm acquiring some here and there. And I'm always like, uh, do I need that? Do I don't need that? Not yet. And I'm like, what's a good deal type of thing? But Jesus always freely gives us tools. Whether we use them or not. So, a lot of times, um, it's going to be the first time to use a tool. And you're scared to use it, and you might get hurt. Well, that's okay. Because um, family, doing family is messy. I mean, it is messy to be in a garage or a workshop or build a house. And sometimes we have accidents. Sometimes we cut ourselves. Sometimes we hit our, our finger with the hammer. Sometimes we, we mess up. And in response to that, sometimes we miss the mark with somebody else. So if somebody has a nail driven into them and we're prying that thing out, it might leave an indent into somebody else's heart and they might be impacted just a little bit. They might feel better that that nail is out of their heart, but now they have an indentation into the other portion of their heart. What can we do to ease the pain as we pull that out? What is the best tool to use to drive out the demon? What is the best tool to raise the dead? What is the best tool to heal the afflicted or save the lost? 
So Jesus will use any tool that is in his tool belt and he'll give them to our, so that we can use in our tool belt, but are we equipped? We're certainly called, but are we equipped to use the tools that he's teaching us here? So, a few examples. Jesus used his own saliva, spit into the dirt, mixed up some mud, and put his fingers into the mud and he wiped them on a blind person's eyes. That was such a creative tool that he used that it wasn't the mud, it wasn't his spit, it wasn't the end, it wasn't the process of doing that to heal the blind person, but it was the act of performing the faith through a physical way to heal a blind person and that that was how it unlocked that blind person's heart that's how he received the healing through that Jesus fed 5,000 people a lot of times we can impact and unlock people's hearts just by feeding people just by um, gathering together and eating and dining with people. We can really just um, sow into a need for daily bread. If somebody is hungry, we feed them. If somebody needs a, 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 an actual physical need to receive healing, it's a physical need. Um, it's a lack of nourishment a lot, a lot of times. They don't have the physical nourishment. They're eating, you know, say, maybe it's not whole foods. It's not fruits and vegetables and grains, but it's fast food. Are we willing to cook a home-cooked meal and bring it to the needy person that is actually craving good, hearty food? And are we willing to dine with them? Dining with the needy, dining with the lost, dining with the hungry can be so impactful for you to do all of the things of, let me listen to your heart, let me see you as Jesus sees you, and, and actually take their blood pressure, and then minister to them and pray with them, actually praying with them. Jesus restored a withered hand just by stretching it out and said, just by the act of stretching it out, he was healed. So it, it's not a, um, it, he wasn't, there wasn't a, a formula to healing. There wasn't a formula to, um, to ministering to certain people. It was a, Father, what do you say about this person? Jesus stuck his fingers into a deaf man's ears and he healed him from um, deafness. These are all tools that Jesus used and we can follow in his footsteps and it will look different. It won't always be the same. We can use the same tools that he used, but ultimately it's asking him, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do this? I have a, a friend that is partially paralyzed in his left side, I believe, and just continuing to pray for healing um, in his arms. He doesn't have any movement in his arms, and we were gathered around a circle one time, really just praying for him, and the Lord put this in my heart to just start squeezing. I didn't say this, but I, I almost wish I had, just squeeze around the circle with our hands until he can start squeezing his hand. Because he can't squeeze with his left hand. He can squeeze with his right hand. But ask the, ask the Lord to um, administer healing through the squeezing of hands around a circle. And just through the touching of some, holding somebody's hand that we can pass along to somebody's, somebody else. Getting in close proximity with somebody we, our heart emanates a um, mag magnetic force. This is a science that emanates a magnetic force that if we're within five, five feet or so of somebody else, we will actually pick up on their heartbeat, that we'll pick up on what they're feeling and what they're going through just by being in close proximity with somebody. 
We can actually feel somebody's pain. We can feel somebody's hurt. We can feel somebody's discomfort just by being close with somebody. And in return, we can, we can release joy. We can release love. We can release compassion to somebody else just by being within five feet of them. So we can give and take just by being in close proximity with somebody. But Jesus calls us to do those things. He was equipping the disciples to, to release his love on the lost, on the crowds.
receive freely. Not take any gold or silver with us, but trust that Jesus will provide every step of the way. I just want to close in prayer. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that you are a good father to us and that you father us so, so well. I thank you that you are a healer, that you are a redeemer, and that you are our savior. Thank you, God, for showing us what it looks like to be a craftsman, showing us what it looks like to be a carpenter or a stone worker, a builder. Just as you did those things in the physical realm, you do those things in the spiritual realm. Show us how to do them in both aspects of our lives. And if we're not ready to do those things, show us and heal us so that we can do those things, so that we can walk in, in your glory, so that we can walk with your spirit in wholeness, in fullness, in health. I thank you for showing us what family looks like. I thank you for gathering around the disciples every day, eating every meal with them breaking bread together and showing us how important it is and what community family looks like and how it's done. From laughing to crying, you did it all with these disciples. You did it all with the people that followed you in your day. Thank you for being the example of what uh, a brother looks like and how the son to the father and the communication there was transmitted to your ear to use the right tools at the right time to unlock the hearts of the, of the hurting and the lost people that were just seeking and searching for the one, for the one true love.
I'm going to get through it tomorrow, and I'm not sure yet if it's going to be Anyone else? Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bring healing where there is pain, and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crop with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish just justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick, especially Connie, and those we name before you in our hearts. Hear our prayers. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died. And fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. 